Hello, everybody. Welcome to, wow, April the 15th. Hello, everybody. Approaching Easter weekend. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Hello. Come on in and get situated. Uh, today, we're doing the last pieces for the quilt top of the hummingbird mosaic. Hello, everybody. I want to thank all of my moderators here today. Thank y'all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me today and keeping an eye on the chat. Hello, everybody. Veronica is waiting for UPS to deliver my Grace Q zone frame. Ooh, that is so exciting, Veronica. Ooh, that's exciting. Sylvia, I see you're feeling a little bit better. That's good. That's good news. Wow, that is so exciting, Veronica. I hope you keep us updated. You're going to have so much fun. Hello, everybody. Uh, while I'm waiting for my iron to warm up, I've already turned her on. I'm going to pull up on the screen the pieces we're doing today so we can have those up there and you can see how I numbered the pieces, the last pieces for this quilt top. And of course, uh, I know some of you are using your own numbering system, but just in case uh, you're using mine, here they are. <laughs> it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. I think by now, nine weeks, y'all, can you believe nine weeks have gone by? The ninth week, I think uh, it might start making a little bit of sense what I'm doing there. While those are on the screen, I just want to announce some little updates for everybody. Um, next Friday, the 22nd, we are not doing a live. We're actually uh, coming home from the campground next Friday, and that's usually busy all in itself. So we're not coming live next Friday, which gives a lot of you uh, an extra week to work on your pieces and get caught up, right? I know uh, Teresa's thinking about getting started from the very beginning. I know some of you are, uh, you know, life is busy. So you might be in week four or five or six. Uh, I think the extra week will give everybody a chance to catch up. Uh, and so we'll be coming back normal schedule on the 29th, the following Friday. And that's when we're going to start quilting. Yeah, see, Linda said, I am so behind. So that gives you an extra week to catch up. And Vicki said, yeah, I need to catch up. So that'll give y'all plenty of time that y'all can just work at your own pace and not feel rushed, right? So no live next Friday. Uh, for those of you on Patreon, we have our virtual quilt retreat coming up on Sunday the 24th from 2 to 8. So mark your calendars in case you have forgotten. I hope that you can pop in and say hello and spend a little bit of time with us or come in at 2 and close us out at 8. Bring your current working and project works and progress projects. I'm tongue tied today. Uh or bring projects you're just starting. Maybe you want to do the block of the month and uh, do that while we're hanging out. Maybe you don't want to do anything and you just want some company. Come on in. And then uh, the Patreon Small Business Rally will be on the 28th uh, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Both of those things are happening before we come back on the 29th. So I just wanted to remind you today. And if you missed... The Mug Rug of the Month. We did that last night here live on my channel. And you can go catch the replay and make that gorgeous mug rug. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. All right. Uh, so there's the pieces that we're doing today. And I just thought it would be fun because when I switch to the cutting mat, you're not going to be able to see my whole quilt to where we are. It just doesn't fit in the screen anymore. So I took a picture of it and you'll see down in the bottom right hand corner, those are the pieces that we're working on today. Uh, the first thing that pops out at me is that little gap sort of right in the middle of the quilt. We're going to be working to fix that uh, coming up. Yep, I'm going to do something to fix that. Oh, Delia, you missed it. You have to go catch the replay. That mug rug is gorgeous. 
It sure is. So that's my quilt, and uh, we're going to switch on down to the cutting mat. See? Right there. Ooh, isn't she pretty? Oh, she's so pretty. Okay, let's switch over to the cutting mat. Lisa, focus. Here we are with my piece placement already marked in, right? And I have all my pieces cut and ready to go. My iron is warmed up. Uh, I don't know how helpful that is to be on the screen. So I'm just going to have it sitting there to reference. And today's pieces, y'all, I'm going to start again with the center of the flowers. I think that worked out really well when we did this flower down here. So uh, we're going to start with those two pieces. And uh, O2 goes right there. <clears throat> she goes right in the middle of that pink flower. Ooh, Ella said, I got tiny pearls at the Buck 25 tree that I might put on my quilt. Oh, ooh, that sounds exciting. If y'all have a minute to stick around at the end, I did pull over a couple of swatches of tulle. Uh, is it tulle? One might be an organza. Uh, for those of you who are thinking about the dreaded quilting process, and you're thinking about layering everything with some tool and doing some simple quilting to finish it up. I just thought I'd show some examples at the end of today's video. Laying some tool over top. So if you want to catch that, that'll be at the end. Kids only CJ, how can I get the whole pattern, please? Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to do a little bit of work. Um, down in the description box, there's a link to the playlist for each one of the nine weeks. In each one of the nine videos, the puzzle pieces are in the description box. So you'll have to go from video to video and just download the pieces and print them off. And there's the center of that flower. <clears throat> and she goes there. Again, I'm going to take the normal iron after we're done today live and just really go over these pieces uh, to make sure they're all fused in place and then uh, this week we have three uh, green pieces we have one leaf down here in the bottom corner and one stem that just pops in right there so we're going to put that one in place Wow, hello in Puerto Rico. Hello. Dari, I love the tea stained muslin. It is my favorite go to background fabric. I always make sure I have a couple of yards of it <laughs> for my projects because it's my favorite background. The second leaf piece comes in just like that. This quilt is actually going to measure 20 inches by 20 inches. So it's the perfect wall size quilt or table topper. You could put it as a centerpiece on your table. That would be gorgeous. And the stem piece. I forgot to grab my sharp little pokey thing. Ah, 
All right, so there's all of the green pieces for this week. That's the final green pieces. And then, which flower is this? Okay, I'm going to be finishing off this flower right here. And um, let's see. We're working there. I think I'm just going to lay out these pieces so I don't get too confused. That seemed to work really well last week. So let's just lay them out. Ooh, she's going to be a pretty flower. Uh, Pam wants to know if you plan on showing us when you quilt this art quilt. I certainly do. So next week we're not going to be live, uh, but the week after that we're coming in to start quilting. Absolutely. So uh, in the time in between then, I will be layering this project. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a thin, warm and natural batting. And I'm going to base the backing on this. And so that when we come back the following Friday, I'm going to start quilting it with you. All right, so, whoops. Does it go like that? It does. Okay, so there's my pieces. And now I can just start taking the paper off and putting them down. Yes, the roses in this fabric, isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. I guarantee you I got this fabric from Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> Vicki said, uh, there's no way she's putting a table, this quilt on the table, <laughs> with the guys in her house. She said it's safer on the wall. <laughs> I have a feeling that since we got our little kitty cat, I might be in the same boat as you, Vicki. He does really good not jumping on the table while we're awake, but see, cat sleeps during the day, primarily, and at night he wanders. So who knows what he does while we are sleeping, and there's no one there to tell him not to. <laughs> I have a feeling he gets into all kinds of mischief, and we sleep through everything. <laughs> uh, Sylvia said, which heat and bond are you using? I've used the purple, but the pieces keep lifting. Sylvia, I'm using the purple one too, the heat and bond light. One reason your pieces might be lifting is it is possible to over press with heat and bond light, especially using the cotton fabrics. Um, it might be that your iron is too hot and it might be that you're pressing for too long. And either of those two cases, what happens is that adhesive soaks in to either your applique fabric or your background fabric. And in that case, your pieces will lift because the adhesive is soaked right in. That might be what is happening. I've also heard people say that uh, their fusible products, uh, they had them for a very, very long time and they just didn't work anymore. I don't know how accurate that is. I've had, uh, I'm working off of a bolt of heat and bond light that I've had for three years that I know of. I know it, I've had it for at least three years. Uh, 
I don't know how fast this stuff goes bad and like how old it has to be for it not to work anymore. And you never really know how long uh, the store has had it before you bought it either. But I've never ever had a fusible that was too old that didn't work. Not saying it can't be the case. I'm just saying in my experience, I've, that hasn't been the case for me. What has happened is I've overheated with my iron being way too hot and that adhesive just soaked right in. If your pieces are lifting, try using uh, a glue stick or put a little bit of wet glue on a brush or your finger and just reach up under and brush the underside of your piece that's lifted and put it back down. Scrunchins, thanks for hanging out with me. Oh, it's a new packet. So uh, maybe lower the temp on your iron and see if that doesn't fix the problem. More than likely, your iron is really hot. Uh, on this iron, I set it on four, which is the hottest setting. And it is super duper hot. But you see, I'm not pressing very long. And I'm moving the iron quite frequently. I'm really just tacking it down at this point. I will come back with my regular iron and just give it a quick press. And usually with my big iron, using heat and bond light, I usually set it on a setting that's right below cotton. So it's not really, really the hottest setting. And I just do a quick little press right over everything. Yeah, see, Veronica said, I've had some heat and bond for 10 years and it still works. Yeah, I don't know, like, how long you have to have it for it to go bad. <laughs> Evidently longer than 10 years. All right, so that's all of the pink pieces. Yeah, see, Vicki said she uses the number three setting on her mini iron, which is probably the safer bet. But I'm trying to work through it quickly, so I have mine on the highest. She gets hot. She gets super hot. Matter of fact, she has put a couple little divots in my cutting mat here. <laughs> All right, and so now we're going to finish up this purple flower down here at the bottom. So let's lay out these pieces. Uh, A5 comes in right there. A4 comes in right there. A6 is at the bottom. A1, pay real close attention to this petal right here, which I've labeled A1. This uh, flower petal is much like uh, the one we did up here. Remember that one? And it does the little flip over like it's drooping. So A1 has a little piece below it. That is also the flower petal. And she goes right there. So she's a drooping one. Okay. 
Yes, I can't believe how quick. It seems like the weeks have just flown by. I don't know about you. Nine weeks, when we first started this project, I was like, wow, this is going to take forever. Nine weeks is a long time. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> the weeks for me just seem to fly by. And I don't know if it's because I've just been so busy that it just seems like before I know it, we're coming on live on Friday. Ooh, Trinita went to Walmart the other day and bought a whole lot of fabric because they're closing. I heard uh, a lot of Walmarts are closing this year. I did hear that the other day. So I'm not the only one who thought it's gone by fast. I was going to say, to me it just has flown by. Sylvia, you're going to make another one and paint it? I would love to do a painted version of this one. Maybe my schedule will open up uh, to where I can do that. I would love to. I did. <laughs> I got my pattern yesterday that I've been waiting for. So I'm going to dive head on with uh, Miss Anitra to do some wool applique in my spare free time. That came yesterday. I haven't even opened it yet, but this afternoon uh, I'm going back to the camper and it's nice outside. I think I'm going to sit outside and open up this envelope and take a preview of the pattern. I'm going to tell you, I thought $18 was kind of high for a pattern, but I guess not. But when the pattern came, it is thick. It is super thick and it's in a great big envelope. So I think I'm going to really have to open this up and start paying attention and reading this pattern before I ever even pull out anything for this project. <laughs> Delia said work gets in the way. She wants to do this project, but work gets in the way. I know. I know. I'm going to tell you back when I was working, not for myself, but, you know, had a job outside of the home, I hardly had time to do projects like this, too, so I know exactly what you mean. That's why back then I was a bit of an insomniac because uh, my kids were little, so I'd work, come home, do dinner and homework and all the stuff with the kiddos, right? And when they went to bed, that was the time where I could do stuff, right? Back then, I did a lot of drawing. And that was simple because it was just paper and charcoal pencils, right? And it wasn't a big setup. And uh, it wasn't a bunch of cleanup or prep time. I just sat down and drawed at night. But I was a bit of an insomniac. <laughs> So there's my purple flower, and all that's left are the sky pieces that fill in the rest of this area. Some of them I did combine. So let's pull this in. Remember we talked about combining some of the uh, smaller bits? I did combine some of them. All right, so we're piecing number nine. This is a, one of the odd shapes for this week. She fits in right below this flower petal and curves up around it. And I used a really, really dark blue fabric. All right, cameras, you can stop glitching. Cut it out.
I've been thinking I might upgrade to a desktop computer. I think having the multiple camera set up is a lot for my laptop. I've been thinking about getting a new computer. My laptop's really not that old. It's relatively new. But I just think the multiple cameras is a lot for the laptop. That's probably why it glitches. All right, piece number two comes in just like this. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you so much. Adding that little pop of blue really makes those flower petals really pop, doesn't it? Ah, oh, Delia, you found me when we were going live every day. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so this piece here is what I combined, 11 and 12. Let me just show you right here. I combined these pieces right there. And they go right there. So I just made that one piece instead of two. Ah, uh, Nadine, y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Dari. Ooh, Nadine is semi-retiring in January. That's exciting. Marilyn said, where do we send our pictures of our finished projects? Well, Marilyn, if you're on Facebook, post them to the creative crew. And if you haven't joined the creative crew, there's a link in the, in the description box, right? Make sure you answer the two security questions. And uh, it's really easy to share pictures there. But if you don't do Facebook and you want to send me a picture, there's a link to my Etsy store in the description box as well. And you can send me a message with a picture right through Etsy. And if you want me to share it with everybody, I wouldn't mind doing a little slideshow of everybody's quilts if you wanna do that. That would be awesome. All right, this piece is coming in right in between these two petals. Ah, oh, Nitra is here. Miss Nitra, I have plans to open up my packet this afternoon and sit outside in the chair and do a little light reading of this pattern. <laughs> I say light reading. It's a pretty thick packet. It's a pretty thick packet. All right, we just have a few more pieces left. Piece number five comes in right there. And although usually I start getting sad if I am enjoying working on a project and I'm starting to approach the end of the piece is right, but I'm actually really excited because we're not done with this quilt. When we come back on the 29th, I'm going to quilt it with you. Um, I know many of you are not into free motion quilting, and that is fine, but maybe hanging out with everybody while I do some free motion quilting uh, would be awesome. 
Maybe it'll inspire you uh, a little bit. Oh, piece number three. That piece is wonkety too, isn't it? It fits right around that leaf, right at the bottom. Because I've used fabric on this quilt, I do plan on doing multiple colors in my quilting. Usually when I quilt um, a painted quilt, I use black thread just because it creates little holes that look and appear dark. So the black thread just kind of hides those little holes poked through the painted fabric. But since this is all fabric, I do plan on using multiple colors of blue and teal, green, purple, pink, and yellow. So it should be a lot of fun. Piece number 10 comes in right there. Come on, paper. The paper doesn't want to come off of this one. Maybe I didn't fuse it long enough. Let's just try and see. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Yep, that must be what it was. I must have not fused it long enough for that fusible to stick on the fabric. So there we go. And we're getting down to the little pieces left. Piece number seven. Comes in right there. I must have been in a hurry. There we go. That fits in right at the bottom. Piece number eight is coming in right there. I could have combined that piece. So there we go. And the rest of the pieces I did not pre-cut because they are tiny. I'm always scared I'm gonna lose these little tiny pieces. So where's my scissors? There we go. All right. So talk about fussy cutting these little tiny pieces. <laughs> All right, piece number six. It is tiny. There's a little piece right down here. I don't even know if it's showing up. You might could get away with not even adding it in there. That's how small it is. Just a little pop of color right there. Oh, y'all are so welcome. You're so welcome. All right, piece number five. Where do you go? Yours or 15. You're so tiny. 15, where? Oh, okay. Right here. 
This little tiny sliver of a piece, I marked 15. I almost missed it. Matter of fact, when I showed the pieces at the beginning of today's live, I don't think I even had numbered it because I had missed it. But there's a little tiny little spot. You might not even have to really add that either. And it comes in right there. <laughs> so I do have a little bit of a gap there. So let's go ahead and fill that in. If you don't have so much of a gap there, you could just leave this little piece out. Y'all trying to make me cry today. I don't know. Y'all are trying to make me cry today. Ella said, piece 14 looks tiny. It is. <laughs> it is so little tiny right there. <laughs> you could probably get away without doing this piece too. I really feel like you could. All right, piece number one. All right, piece number one, we're going to fill in this gap right there with that piece. That piece, I probably wouldn't leave out. That's a pretty good size gap. And I think that's the fabric that I just didn't fuse well enough to begin with. I know, you're right. Nadine, some of these small little pieces are what really makes, I mean, it's funny the difference that these small pieces do make though, right? I mean, look, when we add this piece, it actually could be a little longer, couldn't it? Do I want to make it longer? No, we're just going to go with it. Miss Gloria, I'm going to quilt all of the edges of this piece. Fortunately for me, I find that relaxing. We're all different. Some might think, wow, that's just way too much. And I would never do this project if that's what I had to do. Right? For me, I would turn on some music and just get in a zone and just... I'll have a lot of jump stitches, jump stitches to trim after. I just jump from piece to piece to piece and then change a color and jump from piece to piece to piece and then just have a jump stitching trimming party at the end. And for me, that sounds like a really fun time. For a lot of people, they're like, heck no, I would never do that. So if that might be you in that category, Stick around. I'm going to audition some tool, which might be a wonderful option uh, to go with if you want to do very simple quilting. Or instead of using the Heat and Bond Light, if you use the Heat and Bond in the red package, which is the Ultra Hold, or I think there's a other couple of fusibles that are permanent. Once you get the pieces done, that's it. And, uh, you don't quilt through those products, right? They're permanent. So you could be done at this point. Piece number four comes in right here at the bottom. But for me, it sounds like some wonderful relaxing evenings or an afternoon here and there. And I will also be doing a lot of the quilting during our lives. So um, you can come hang out with me while I quilt. Oh, 
Oh no, I ripped the adhesive off. <laughs> this blue fabric, I must have not, uh, I must have not fused it very long enough for that adhesive to stick to the fabric. So now I have to freehand cut piece number 14. I will be uh, quilting it on the machine. If you love hand quilting, I guess, I reckon you, you certainly could do it by hand. That would be a lot of stitching. All right, so I just freehanded a piece that's going to fit right in there. And I didn't cut it very well at all. Let's trim off that little pokey. There we go. Do you use a small zigzag? You could. You certainly could. I feel like that would be even more time consuming. Uh, I plan on putting on my free motion foot. Uh, you might call it a darning foot. And I plan on doing a uh, straight line quilting close to the edge of most of my pieces. Some of the bigger ones like this one, I might do some kind of filler quilting in there. Uh, I guess it depends on the mood. I'm in when I get to that piece, but I do think that some of the big pieces really offer some opportunities to do uh, some really fun filler quilt designs in them. Maybe even the petals, doing an echo quilting in each one of the petals. I don't know. We shall see. I don't think that there's a wrong or a right way. So what I would always say is whatever makes sense to you and you're comfortable with, that's what I would do. This is the tiny piece number 14 we talked about. Where did that go? Oh, right down here at the bottom. You might want to put it in there and you might want to leave it out. Let's just audition it. And this is the very last piece we're adding. And she's a doozy. <laughs> she's a tiny little thing. Matter of fact, trying to quilt this little tiny piece. Would be interesting. There we go. Yeah, it's tiny. Yes, thread art. Yep. Liz said you saved a hard one for the last. I sure did. <laughs> that little tiny thing. And, uh, I mean, you can see it, right? You can certainly see it there. So it does make a difference. Let me clean up all these little paper bits. So that's it, y'all. That's all the pieces. Let me just clean up this bit. There we go. So here we are, and it's not going to all fit in the screen. I do have some areas that I want to approach and maybe tweak and fix. This one is the one I've talked about each week. It really just is the first thing I look at. I'm going to do something. I might cut a sliver of fabric just to quickly fill that in. And that would look good. I might do some rhinestones or some beadwork. I haven't decided yet. Um, if I'm going to fill it in with fabric, I will probably do that before we come back on the 29th. If I decide to use beads or paint or anything that is three-dimensional, then this spot will get filled in after the quilting because I don't want any beads or sequins or any of that on this when I bring it to the sewing machine. 
So I have a little bit of time to commit on how I'm going to fix this. I might bring in the black marker and widen some of the lines. Um, I really like to set it up on the wall and then step back. And whatever my eye is drawn to first, I kind of contemplate, do I need to address that or leave it alone? Like uh, when I look at the screen, I see that line gets awful thin right there. So I might come in with my black marker and widen some of those lines, right? Just like that. Because I do like that separation there between my pieces. See what a difference that makes? Just a little bit wider. So I might go through and uh, do that with some of my pieces. I really feel um, that I get the best view of everything when I can step back away from it and look at it. Sometimes this close up, uh, my eye doesn't get drawn to something, but when I take some steps back, then stuff will pop out at me. Would embroidery go on before quilting too? I really feel like, Valerie, that uh, there's not a right and a wrong answer on that one. Sometimes if I'm doing embroidery on something, I might want to do that before quilting. And sometimes uh, I find I like the result of doing embroidery after the quilting. So I think it really depends on what kind of embroidery you're going to do right? Certainly, uh, if you're quilting and your quilting is going to go over top of your embroidery, you'll want to wait and do your quilting first, right? But if the embroidery is not going to get in the way of how you plan on quilting, then you could, if it's easier for you, to do it first, right? When you're just working with this layer, if you do your quilting and then you come in with embroidery, Machine embroidery will show on the back of your quilt. You might be fine with that. You might not want it to show up on the back. Um, if you're doing hand embroidery, um, you do have the luxury of traveling in the middle, in the batting, right, with your needle. So I think it, I don't know that there's a right and a wrong answer. Ah, Candy said it would take some time, but a person could hand embroider the outline in black with a chain stitch or rope stitch or some other candy. Yes. Now, I know a chain stitch and I know like a simple outlining stitch. The rope stitch, maybe that's something I'm going to learn when I get into the wool applique project. That's exciting. Okay, so uh, let's go back a little bit and let's talk about um, all of these pieces. And uh, you've used freezer paper to do your applique or you've used heat and bond light or steam a seam. And we're finishing up week nine pieces and you've been thinking how in the world Am I going to get all of this quilted? I don't want to do free motion quilting. And uh, the thought of permanently stitching down all of these pieces is causing me anxiety. <laughs> I'm going to show you a simple way to fix it. All right. So uh, you might have seen this before. I certainly did, didn't invent this. Uh, and I do have a couple of other videos here on my channel showing it. If you want to check out um, the Garden Archway quilt, I used this technique. If you want to check out uh, the Hexagon Flower Table Topper video, I used this technique. And I also did a Mosaic Angel mug rug 
using this technique. Matter of fact, give me a second. I'm going to go grab her. I'll be right back. All right, I'm coming back. So um, this is a raw edge applique and I have layered the project with tool. And on this one, I did quilt all the black lines, right? So I didn't quilt each individual piece all the way around. I quilted right in the black lines in between the pieces. It has a wonderful texture. Let's well, you can't really see it from the back because my thread just blends right in there. But if you can see that texture, and the cool thing on this was super duper easy because I it was like stitching the ditch, right? I just stitched right in between all of these pieces. And uh, isn't that gorgeous? So this is also a video on my channel. I used my brother's scan and cut to cut out all the background pieces and the angel. Right? And uh, so, yeah, I just covered it with tool and did some very simple straight line quilting. I think I did uh, a free motion stitch around the angel. I think I did do that. But certainly you could do that with a regular stitch as well. Right? Same process, if you layer this with some tool or some organza, you would not have to quilt down every single edge of each one of these pieces. It's a pattern for sale for this angel. Yes, it's in my Etsy shop. So actually this is a combination, before we move on, this is actually a combination so uh, the angel uh, is a separate file. And then the background tiles is part of a kit that you get like five different background tiles. And this is one of the set of tiles. And they're cutting files for your cutting machines. So um, check out the video for this. And uh, if, you if you type in YouTube, Lisa Capen Mosaic, uh, this video will probably pop up as one of the videos that come up. I actually combined uh, a couple of different things to make this. All right, so I have three different colors of tool here, and uh, we're just going to lay it over top and see what happens. This one is actually like a goldish color very light see that now one thing I will say before I lay this down on there is uh, you don't really get the full result of the tool until you do some kind of quilting okay so keep that in mind this tool almost almost disappears right uh, you can see the sheen of it when you hold it to the light differently but it almost disappears. That didn't happen until I did some quilting, right? So when I lay this over top, it's going to appear a little bit lighter, but when you come in and do a little bit of quilting, it kind of flattens it out a little bit. See that? This one almost disappears on the background and doesn't make any of my... Uh, applique pieces darker so I kind of really like this one right it just covers everything you could do a crosshatch quilting um, you could just do straight lines across and vertically and horizontally if you wanted to um, you could do some wavy lines and call it quilted and that would be that right but look at that one. It almost disappears right over top of everything. This is a good contender. This is like a gold color. See how light that is? And you would think, just looking at it in the store, that's not going to work. But it almost just disappears right over top of everything. 
And then let's bring in, let's bring in this one. This one's sort of like a peachy color, almost like a mauve, a very light mauve. What you could do if you're going to shop for this is bring your quilt top with you and audition these while you're in the store. If you're nervous about buying one and it not being right, bring your quilt top with you. Lay it down on some bolts of fabric, right? And audition some of the tools before you buy it. This one almost completely disappears as well. And this was like a light peach or mauve color. It almost disappears. Now the holes on this one are closer together than the holes on that one. So in person, I see the this more than I did the other one, right? But still, in the big scheme of things, it almost disappears on the quilt. Ah, oh, Dari, thank you so much for sharing the link. You found it. This one, again, is like a light rose color. Almost pink, a little rose color. We're just going to play around and audition these just to show you that you almost can't go wrong <laughs> with it. But it, when you ball it up, it looks really light, right? Let's lay this one down. That one would be lovely. Very nice. The colors still shine through really bright. Again, all three of these have been different colors, but almost just disappear right on the quilt. Uh, since I did the freezer paper, if I did the tool, would I still have to stitch over each piece? Nope. That's the beauty of this, Miss Ella. Nope. Uh, you will need to quilt it, right? You'll need to anchor your tool to your quilt. Straight lines, wavy lines, cross hatching, some kind of quilting to anchor the tool in place. Um, and I would do closer lines together, right? Look at this when we lay that over there. Um, you know, like a line here, a line here, a line here, maybe every three inches to really anchor the tool to the quilt. And then that tool is going to anchor each one of your individual pieces. It will not lift up. You won't be able to snag the piece on anything. The tool is going to hold each one of those pieces down. But you do need to anchor that tool, right, with some quilting. Do some wavy lines. That would be pretty. Cross hatching is one of my favorite things to do. Cross hatching would be gorgeous. This is the darker tool that I used on the angel. So just to show you how that would appear on this quilt. This one does darken my applique pieces just a little bit, right? The, the yellow is not as quite as bright. The white is not quite as bright. But the black shows up darker using this one. So let's just do a little side-by-side -side comparison, right? So there's the dark tool, and here's the light tool. <laughs> just so you can get some examples and some ideas. All right, so see the difference? There's the light tool with the yellow and the dark tool. See the difference? So bring your quilt top with you to the store and just audition it. I really don't know that you could go wrong with a tool color, but uh, the darker ones do make a little bit of difference. See that? Yes. So, um, yeah, if you want to go that route and take out a lot of work, 
uh, cover it with tulle and do some simple, uh, simple quilting. That's what I would do if I was, you know, just really worried about getting all of these pieces quilted. For me, my plan of approach is I would love to use some embroidery threads. Uh, I have a wide range of colors. They have a sheen to them. I think that would be gorgeous. Um, sometimes the embroidery threads, when I do free motion quilting, cause me an issue. I would love to use them, and I'm hoping to work out uh, my tension and which needles to use with those threads before we start quilting, because I would really love to use the embroidery threads. They're gorgeous with the, the sheen to them. And I have some colors that would look phenomenal on these pieces. But if not, I do have an array of thread colors, uh, just normal quilting threads that I might use. Can you iron over the tool? Do you know that years ago, and I saw this video years ago, about five years ago, and I have not been able to find that video since. What she did is she laid tool or organza. I'm not sure which one she used now because it's been a while. And she laid it over top of her project and she used the iron. I'm not telling you to do this. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I saw. And when she ironed it, it permanently fused the organza to her project. I'm a little nervous to try that, especially when I've done all of this work. So, I don't know. I don't know that I would use an iron over top of the tool. I think if I wanted to experiment with it, here's what I would do is I would get some scraps and I would lay down some parchment paper and I would put my scraps on there and cover it with tool and lay down some more parchment paper and try it and see. I have not done it. But I know I saw a video and she fused her organza or her tool with an iron and it stuck to her project and it was finished. I have looked for a couple years to find that video again and I cannot find it. Hello, Miss Betty. Happy Easter. Yes, variegated blue thread would be gorgeous on the background, right? We are on week nine. We just finished up the last pieces for this quilt. But if you're looking to get started, uh, I'm not coming on live next week. So that'll give you a good solid two weeks to catch up, right? Those are the pieces we just finished. I don't know that I would iron directly on tool. I think, I think if you want to experiment with it, I would at least cover it with uh, some parchment paper. Yeah, I'd be nervous about it too. I really would. <laughs> but if you pull a, you know, a scrap basket over and you're just messing with little bitty scrap pieces, covering it would at least save your iron. It might not save your scrap pieces that you're fusing tool to and it might have been a special tool that she had i can't even remember now i think it does melt valerie and i think that's why she did it because it just seemed to melt to her project All right, happy, happy Easter, Dari. Thanks for moderating and sharing links today. I want to thank all of my moderators as we're closing out for today. Y'all do me a great, huge service each week, keeping an eye on the chat, and I appreciate each and every one of you. 
Uh, and I know I miss a lot of stuff, especially when I'm focusing on the project. So if I've missed any of your comments or your questions, just know it's not intentional. And uh, Ella said, did you sleep good after you're not? I went right to sleep. We went back to the camper. It was raining. I'm so glad Harlan was driving. And uh, got settled in and went right to sleep. <laughs> I sure did. Yes, happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. I hope that uh, you have a nice, relaxing weekend planned out for you. Yes, Miss Sylvia, just know that we're praying for you to get better. Yes, Valerie said, what a blessing this group is. I totally agree, Valerie. I am thankful for it every single day. And I'm just, I'm just going to say this as we close out, okay? Many of you, many of you, and I know I've talked to a couple of you, have thought about doing videos either here on YouTube or on TikTok or somewhere else. And you've just been putting it off. Let me just tell you. Uh, and I'm certainly not a professional, y'all. I mess up all the time. My voice goes out. Uh, I say the wrong things. Uh, sometimes I mess up while we're doing a live video, right? Uh, it's just part of the process. I put off making videos for a full two years. And uh, it would be something that I was feeling led to do, and I would make excuses not to do it, right? Y'all, I'm a very introverted person. I'm in If you look up introverts in the dictionary, there should be a picture of my face next to that word. I'm a quiet, introverted person. I could spend all day by myself and just be happy as a clam. I could go all day without talking to anybody. Not that I don't want to talk to people, but I'm okay being by myself and not talking, right? True definition of introvert. So for two full years, I was making t-shirt quilts. And if I had a question, I would try to look up tutorials and couldn't find tutorials on the questions that I had. And I'm like, someone should do a video on that. <laughs> And I just felt like the Lord was like saying, yeah, you should do a video on it. I've been telling you, Lisa, that you should do a video and you keep making excuses. And I did. I made excuses of why I couldn't do videos. I'm too busy. Uh, I don't know enough about quilting to qualify to make videos about this. Pfft, please. Do you know how much I've learned since I started making videos about quilting? It's phenomenal. Uh, when I first started making videos, I had just started putting real bindings on my quilts, y'all. <laughs> I went 20 years not doing a binding on quilts. Please, I'm not qualified to teach anybody. Some of y'all have been feeling like you want to make videos. We would love to watch your videos. You don't have to be professional. You don't have to be qualified. You don't have to go to school for quilting to do this or for any other topic that you want to make videos on. All you have to do is show up and be who you are and be willing to share what you do know. So if you're somebody like me who was putting it off, I encourage you this week, just pull out your cell phone, turn on the camera, and make a video. You'll be surprised that what you know, somebody else is trying to learn and can learn that from you. Yes, Scrunchins just said it. Everyone has something to teach the rest of us. Exactly. And Vicki said, or on a, an extension table. Yes, Vicki. <laughs> yes, Vicki. Debbie said, I'm going on two years of putting it off. 
Two years is exactly how long I put it off. And I'm going to tell you the very day uh, I had been telling Harlan, I think I want to make YouTube videos on making t-shirt quilts. And he's like, you should do it. You should do it. Every time for two years I would bring it up, he's like, you should do it. I was at church one Sunday and we were talking about something totally not about making YouTube videos, but I'm going to tell you, the Lord told me, I've been telling you to do something and you've not been listening to me. And how long are you going to keep putting this off? And just look in this five, five or six years, what we have formed. Imagine had I not ever made a video, we wouldn't know each other, right? Imagine all the people he has set up for you in your life that you're not going to meet because you're putting it off like I did, right? So there's just an encouraging word as we're closing out, if you're still here. (laughs) Yes, yes. So there you go. I'm going to go put this on the design wall or first I'm going to give it one little good press the pieces that I put on today I just like to go over them real quick careful not to press too much right because we learned what happens when you do that but just a quick press it's going up on the wall so I can look at it really good for a couple days and really notice the areas that I want to address on this make a decision if I want to fill it in with fabric or wait till after the quilting right And uh, y'all, if you just came in, we're not going to be live next Friday. That gives you some extra time to catch up, right? And uh, we will be back on the 29th with our regular schedule. Right? Okay, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And uh, I won't see you till the 29th here on YouTube. But if you're on Patreon, don't forget our quilt retreat. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, as always, post your pictures on the creative crew. I want to see them. What do y'all think about doing a slideshow at some point with your hummingbird quilts during the live? I love that idea. I would love to show off your hummingbird quilts. So think about doing a slideshow. We'll figure out a way to organize it so that we can share your work with everybody. And... um, Yeah, if you're not on Creative Crew and you want to send me a picture, message me through Etsy. All of the links are right down in the description box. I am off to get some Taco Bell for lunch. (laughs) And then I'm off to do some light reading with this pattern that I'm going to start. Yeah, I love the idea of the slideshow. Y'all have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Toodaloos.